Welcome to the Reaper 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to be the biggest idiot to give your soul over to a void scent better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 70 for how you start, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker levels. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for the video about it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes, or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Reaper is a DPS job all about big hits and bursts of speed. If Dragoon is a train, Reaper is a bullet train. Your base rotation is simple and easy, but comes with multiple layers of complexity skills leading into other skills, multiple skills turning into other skills, and a special burst phase with massively increased attack speed, similar to Machinist. Personally, I believe if you have experience with Dragoon, Reaper lends itself well to your learning. The two jobs are nothing alike, but do have enough similarities to be helpful. This especially applies to long-time players who played Dragoon before Shadowbringers. Otherwise, it offers a unique blend of slowness speed, and power. To obtain the Reaper job, you must own the Endwalker expansion. You must complete your level 10 class quest, something you should have done long ago anyway, be level 70, and go to the quest giver in front of the Adventurer's Guild in Uldah. They'll be across the street. Before worrying about the Reaper toolkit, a reminder that you have melee roll actions. If you want detailed description of these actions, Head to the description or the card in the corner for a video about them. I will otherwise not describe their uses here. Let's quickly mention two of the three traits you start with. The third will come up later when we start talking about the skills in more detail. Level 50, Soul Gauge. You start off with a little gauge, the Soul Gauge. This fills as you attack or get special benefits from another ability. We'll go over that when we come to it. Otherwise, just know to watch this gauge for later. Level 60, Death Scythe Mastery. Potency boosts, and that's all this is. You'll see higher numbers from your attacks when level 60 or above. If you're below level 60, expect to be even slightly weaker due to this trait. Otherwise, not something to really worry about as far as learning the job. You may not even remember this exists. Now, we start with a bunch of skills too. I'm going to break them down together. When it comes to learning the job at lower levels, you just take pieces out of your toolkit as you get lower and lower. But level 70 starts off pretty well put together that it isn't too overwhelming to understand when broken down thusly. Level 1, Slice. Level 5, Waxing Slice. And level 30, Infernal Slice. 300 potency, 380 potency, and 460 potency respectively when used in the combo. And each hit gives you 10 soul gauge, which we'll talk about how we spend later. This is your basic single target combo, the main series of skills you revert to when you have no important skills to be using. Combos should always be done fully and in order. Never try to start with the middle button. And a combo continuation looks like this. 
the glowing, broken line border. This can mean several things, but in this case it means combo. This gets more complex when we add in the rest of our toolkit. Level 10, Shadow of Death. This is a 300 potency attack to a target that puts a 30 second debuff called Death's Design on the enemy that increases all damage you do to it by 10%. Further, you can use this attack a second time on the enemy to extend the timer up to a maximum of 60 seconds. And finally, if the enemy dies while this buff is active, you will gain 10 Soul Gauge. You should absolutely keep this buff up on the enemies at all times. 10% damage up on top of your already high potency attacks is a big increase for you. And while you are learning, absolutely take every opportunity to make sure you have more than 30 seconds on the timer. Gives you more leeway to focus on all the other buttons you have available, which later on becomes a lot to manage. Further, this skill does not break combos. If you use Slice, then use Shadow of Death, your combo into Waxing Slice will be maintained. So if your buff is about to fall off, or if you want to extend the timer, you can do it at any point in your main combo. Again, be sure to keep this up to make sure your damage is high. Level 60, Soul Slice. On a 30 second cooldown, this weapon skill does a 460 potency hit to the target, and gives you 50 Soul Gauge. Keep in mind, each hit of your main combo only gives you 10. This attack does as much damage as Infernal Slice, while also giving 50 gauge. This is extremely important to keep on cooldown. It will be worth even more damage when we talk about your gauge spenders. This also does not break your main combo, just like Shadow of Death. And so now this is where things are going to start getting confusing, so let's take it slow. Level 70, Enhanced Avatar. When using the skills Bloodstock or Grim Swath, you will be granted Soul Reaver. This trait is an upgrade onto the attack we'll go over next. Soul Reaver allows you to use a further powerful attack, but you must immediately spend this buff. If you do not spend the buff, you will lose it. Well, you have 30 seconds to use it, but if you use any other attack, it will disappear. Essentially, you're breaking the combo, and this is a combo you must immediately do. Level 50, Bloodstock. This is an ability, which means you can weave it between your global weapon skills, or use it between each just like shown in the clips. It costs 50 gauge to use, does 340 potency to any single target, and grants you one stack of Soul Reaver. And again, using any attack, and I mean any attack, will remove this buff from you. When you use Bloodstock, you must immediately spend this buff on the intended skills, which for single target are... Level 70, Gibbet and Gallows. These are the attacks you spend Soul Reaver on. These are essentially combos off of Bloodstock. They both have the same overall effects, but some slight differences. Both do 400 potency and 460 potency when executing their positional, which means bonus damage when hitting an enemy from a specific point. Gibbet has a flank or side positional, pictured on screen with the red sections of the ground. Gallows has a rear positional, also pictured on screen. Using either of these skills has an additional effect where it enhances the other. Using Gibbet will grant you Enhanced Gallows, which makes Gallows do more damage when using it next. Using Gallows will grant Enhanced Gibbet, making Gibbet do more damage. What this means is, every time you use Bloodstock, you want to alternate these two skills. You can tell because of the combo highlights over the opposite skill. Bloodstock, Gallows, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Bloodstock, Gallows, etc, etc. Now, of course, you can't just keep doing it over and over, since Bloodstock has a high gauge cost. But you have 60 seconds with this enhanced buff, so you have plenty of time to alternate each as needed. But you may have noticed two other skills in your list that confuse you. Level 70, Unveiled Gibbet, and Unveiled Gallows. This took me a while to figure out, but these are just upgrades to Bloodstock, 
Watch Bloodstock here when I use Gibbet and Gallows. It changes with you having Enhanced Gibbet and Gallows. Where Bloodstock does 340 potency of damage, these unveiled attacks do 400 potency. This further emphasizes you want to be spending gauge when you can. From this point on though, I will continue to call it Bloodstock, since it is the same button. Every time it will be Bloodstock, not Unveiled. And finally, let me ultimately mention, this does not break your main combo either. Really, the only thing that will break your main combo, Slice, Waxing Slice, etc., is doing your main combo out of order, or your AoE, Area of Effect, Attack Combo. So let's review. Shadow of Death to put your buff up and keep it up. Your 3-hit combo to build gauge. Soul Slice to give you a lot of gauge at once, and you may want to keep that on cooldown. Bloodstock to spend that gauge. And then Gibbet and Gallows immediately after Bloodstock to use the given Soul Reaver buff. Alternate Gibbet and Gallows as you use more Bloodstocks. Seem like a lot more, but broken down, it's not as bad as it could have been. Now let's talk about our AoE versions of these abilities. You tend to want to use AoE on three or more enemies as a Reaper. Level 25, Spinning Scythe, and level 45, Nightmare Scythe. This is our AoE main combo. Spinning Scythe is 140 potency to all enemies within 5 yarms of you, with Nightmare doing 180 potency to all enemies within the same range. Each hit also gives you 10 soul gauge. Further, using your special attacks will once again not break this combo. Only your single target combo will break it. Use these attacks to earn gauge when you have nothing else to be using. Level 35, Whirl of Death. Does a 5 yom AoE around yourself that hits all enemies in range with a 100 potency attack. Also putting Death's design on the targets. Remember, this is what ups our damage. When dealing with groups of enemies, this is your AoE version of putting up your buff on enemies. When running along with the tank, try and use this to get the buff on. Once it is, start using your other AoEs to start building Soul Gauge. This buff is especially important for AoE, because if there are 5 enemies in the group, Whirl of Death will be worth 50 Soul Gauge when the enemies die with Death's design on. Even more enemies from special large enemy count pools, or the tank mass pulling many groups of enemies, leads to you gaining massive amounts of soul gauge. This makes Reaper an absolute powerhouse in dungeon trash pools. Imagine getting 80 gauge just because you finished a group of enemies off. That is why World of Death is important here. Level 65, Soul Scythe. This has a 5 yom radius around you, does 180 potency to all enemies hit, and gives you 50 soul gauge. However, this shares that 30 second cooldown with Soul Slice. If you use either skill, both of these will go on cooldown. This is just your AoE version of this skill. Make sure to keep it on cooldown so you can keep getting gauge. Wait for the tank to group everything up, then fire away. Level 55, Grim Swath. This is our AoE version of Bloodstock, which means you get Soul Reaver and must immediately use that buff afterwards. It costs 50 gauge, can be used between weapon skills, and does 140 potency to all enemies in an 8 yom cone in front of you. It is a very large cone, as you can see, essentially being completely in front of you. This has some level of awkwardness involved though, since you will have to step in and out of groups of enemies to use the different skills. In for your main combo and out for all your other skills, it can be a bit messy. Level 70, Guillotine. This is your AoE version of Gibbet and Gallows, which means this is what you will use Soul Reaver on after using Grim Swath. This is another 8 yom cone, and does 200 potency to all enemies within the cone. Spend your gauge on Grim Swath in AoE, then immediately use Guillotine. As a side note, if for some reason there are, say, three enemies and one enemy dies early, leaving only two, you can use Grim Swath into Gibbet or Gallows, 
you aren't locked within AoE if you use Grim Swath. Conversely, if you use Bloodstock, you can still use Guillotine. This flexibility may find some use in some very rare situations. Now let's finish off with talking about our few other buttons. Level 15, Harp. Does a 300 potency ranged attack with a 25 yom range. However, this has a 1.3 second cast time. As a result, you need to quickly get into place if you wish to use your ranged attack. And while ranged attacks do not break combos, you should generally avoid using them as much as possible. Try and stay within range of enemies as much as you can. There will be times you cannot be within melee range, but they're not as common as you think they are. More often than not, you can keep pace with your melee attacks. Level 20, Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress. These two skills share a 20 second cooldown and work in tandem later on. Hell's Ingress is a 15 yom leap forward, while Hell's Egress is a 15 yom jump backwards. Using either one will put them both on cooldown. This is an extremely useful pair of skills for moving around. You can avoid AoEs or quickly move into range of a boss no problem. A further effect is a combo with Harp. For 15 seconds, you have one instant cast use of Harp. This is not necessarily going to be used often, but for any situation where you absolutely must remain out of range of the boss, not having a cast time for a single use of Harp further increases your mobility. You can escape from harm even more safely while still attacking. Just remember, don't focus so much on using Harp, try and maintain use of your melee skills as much as you can. Level 40, Arcane Crest. On a 30 second cooldown, this grants you a shield for 5 seconds, with 10% of your max HP. This is kind of rough to use in solo content that isn't solo duties. 10% isn't a lot of HP, but 5 seconds is a very short time. Put it up as much as you can, and in party content, absolutely make sure to use this anytime raid-wide abilities are about to go out, or damage you just fail to dodge. This can save you and get a major buff later on. And so that covers all of our basic skills we have the moment we unlock Reaper. It is overwhelming without some level of direction, but hopefully this breakdown helped. The first job quest also does a pretty good job of explaining it and giving you practice on the job. Now let's talk openers and rotation. This is actually extremely basic as a level 70. Keep buff up, Keep Soul Slice or Soul Scythe on cooldown, depending on if single target or AoE. Spend your gauge for your big hits. Then rely on your basic combo until you must refresh the buff or use another soul skill. So simple, our opener is basically non-existent. And let me remind everyone quick, openers are for single target. AoE, you just go for using your big stuff as much as you can, not paying really any attention to an actual rotation per se. Shadow of Death, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Slice, Waxing Slice, Infernal Slice. I won't bother going any further than here because there really isn't anything else to do for Reaper's opener at this point. As I said, you need to keep your buff up, keep your Soul Slice on cooldown, and spend gauge when you can use Bloodstock. At this point, it's more about understanding how the different layers of the toolkit fit together which is a skill-by-skill -skill basis sort of understanding. Now let me go over this opener again, but this time, faster. I will call this the Karaoke Opener Overview. The speed I vocally go over the opener will be the speed I actually use the attacks in the video clip. So if you hear me cut myself off or two of me speaking skill names at the same time, that's because of how quick openers can get. Pay close attention to how my attacks go off as I speak them. Shadow of Death, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Slice, Waxing Slice, Infernal Slice. And then that really is all there is to it. Going into the Shadowbringers levels, however, is going to massively speed up how much Reaper has to do. Level 72, 
Arcane Circle. On a 2 minute cooldown and with a 15 yarm range, this gives all allies affected a 3% damage boost for 20 seconds. This is extremely important to get this out to your party. 3% is small on its own, but it ideally is affecting the entire party, making it so much more powerful. This is especially true during openers and bosses. Buffs multiply, so pairing it with everyone else makes it even stronger. In dungeons, trash pulls, wait for your tank to group up all the enemies before popping this. If they are pulling wall to wall as many enemies as they can, you want to be bursting all your damage together when everything is grouped, rather than when everyone is in the middle of running. The importance of this skill will also increase later. Level 74, Hell's Gate and Regress. Hell's Gate is a trait that buffs Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress. Whenever you use either of these skills, you leave behind a portal from your starting position and turn the opposite skill into Regress. So if you use Hell's Ingress, Hell's Egress will become Regress. Regress lasts for 10 seconds and has twice the range as the initial jump. So while the skills move you 15 yams forward and backward, you can use Regress from within 30 yams of the portal, which upon pressing Regress will teleport you back to the portal from anywhere within range. This is massive for movement. You can teleport out of range right before an enemy launches an attack, then teleport right back in. And if it's a lengthy wait to get back in, you can say, use Hell's Egress, use that instant cast harp you were given, then teleport right back into range with Regress. Just make sure it's a situation that requires this. As I've already mentioned, being away from enemies is not ideal. All your big, strong attacks require you to almost exclusively be near the boss, or at least max melee range. But proper mastery of these two skills can turn an entire boss arena into your playground. Level 76, Gluttony. On a 60 second cooldown and costing 50 soul gauge, this ability has a range of 25 yams, so you may throw it out from a distance if need be. It causes a 5 yam AoE around the initial target, dealing 500 potency to the first target and 375 potency to all additional enemies hit. And most importantly, gives you two stacks of Soul Reaver. This means in single target fights when using this skill, you can do Gibbet immediately into Gallows. And because of its extremely high potency, even with the damage fall off, you use it in AoE too. This gives you two uses of Guillotine as a result. And just like before, you cannot use any other attacks or you lose these Soul Reaver stacks immediately. Gluttony takes extreme priority over Bloodstock or Grim Swath. Both of these are far lower in power and only give one Soul Reaver. Where possible, which should be almost always, use the bonus gauge from Soul Slice and Soul Scythe immediately on Gluttony. Level 78, Tempered Soul. Simply put, you now have two stacks of Soul Slice and Soul Scythe, making these skills have multiple charges. The moment one charge completes, the second charge will begin to count down until you are full on charges. This retroactively makes Gluttony even better, because each charge only takes 30 seconds. You get two charges for every 60 seconds it takes to get Gluttony back. This means you can always have a stack of Soul Slice or Soul Scythe in reserve for when Gluttony will be coming off of cooldown. This also means you have even more gauge generation. Between trash pulls, you may get one or more charges back. In transitions in trials where you can't attack, that timer will be slowly ticking down. Try and find the balance of always having one stack available to use Gluttony and continually using the charges for more avatar attacks. Level 80, Shroud Gauge, and Shroud, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, and Grim Reaping. That is a lot, so let's break it down. First off, if you wish to get this ability, you must complete your Reaper job quests. This will remain locked until you do so, so go and do it. First skill, Shroud Gauge. You now have two gauges on your bar. 
you accumulate 10 Shroud anytime you use Gibbet, Gallows, or Guillotine. And in case you forgot somehow, those are the skills that you use with Soul Reaver. Next, we have Enshroud, which has a 15 second cooldown. This does actually come into play later, but not in any major way that you need to be worried about. It costs 50 Shroud Gauge to activate, and allows you to pull the dumbest idea you will ever have as a Warrior Light, and... Offer your flesh as a vessel for your avatar. Which, may I remind you, is a Void Scent that wishes to possess your body permanently. Anyway, there is now a second UI element, the Death Gauge, and five stacks of Lemire Shroud. Each stack allows you to pull off an attack, for five total in your time as a vessel. Void Reaping is an upgraded version of Gibbet, and Cross Reaping is an upgraded version of Gallows. They do not retain their positionals, so you may use them from any position around the enemy. Further, they have a 1.5 second recast, rather than the 2.5 second recast of any other normal skill. This means you have to be hitting these buttons a lot faster. Just like normal, however, you want to be alternating them like normal Gibbet and Gallows. They still will enhance the other. It is 460 potency normally, and 520 when enhanced. Alternating back and forth ensures they remain at 520 potency. You may start with either one, as long as you alternate back and forth. Each use of either of these costs one Lemire Shroud. Use five attacks, and the Lemire Shroud will dissipate. Finally, we have Grim Reaping. This is our AoE use of Lemire Shroud. 200 potency to all enemies in an 8 Yom Cone in front of you. Hit this five times, and you will finish up your Lemire AoE. And again, if there is for whatever reason you need to switch between single target and AoE Lemire attacks, just like the Avatar attacks, you can. Our opener has not changed much, but it is plenty more active already. A second stack of Soul Slice greatly speeds up the pressure, and Gluttony is a big addition to our Avatar toolkit. Shadow of Death, Arcane Circle, Soul Slice, Gluttony, Gibbet, Gallows, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Slice, Waxing Slice, Infernal Slice. The big thing that may draw your eye is how quickly we go into our Arcane Circle. Quick openers like this seem to be the norm for Endwalker. We want our buffs up quick, so we can immediately start throwing out all of our big hits. And our allies will be doing the same. And because it lasts for 20 seconds, everyone should just about get their openers done within the Arcane Circle. From there, it is likely exactly how you might expect the opener to go. We use one of our Soul Slices to get the charge going for the next one, and use the gauge from that Soul Slice to use Gluttony. We are forced to use Gibbet and Gallows. Remember, the one you start with is up to you, just be sure to alternate them going forward. And then left with a bit more time on our Arcane Circle. Use the Soul Slice we still have for a Bloodstock, and a third Gibbet or Gallows, and we're stuck with just normal attacks after this. Once Arcane Circle and other party buffs fall off, feel free to put up a second Death's Design to get the timer over 30 seconds, and continue on your rotation. Use Enshroud when you can, keep your debuff up, use everything else on cooldown, and keep pushing the damage. Now let's do the Karaoke Opener version before we move on. Shadow of Death, Arcane Circle, Soul Slice, Gluttony, Gibbet. Gallows, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Slice, Waxing Slice, Infernal Slice. Hope all that helps, and yet the ramp up for Reaper isn't even over yet. There's so much more to do. Level 82, Soul Sow and Harvest Moon. Become the greatest Stardew Valley player with this skill. It works weirdly though. Outside of combat, this is an instant cast. Inside of combat, it has a 5 second cast time. Because of this, you do not want to use Solso unless the enemy cannot be attacked. 
For example, if the boss is doing some form of ultimate attack they are untargetable for. Upon finishing the cast, you will be granted the buff of Solso, which turns Solso into Harvest Moon. Using Harvest Moon spends the Solso and immediately reverts the button. The action itself is a 5 yom AoE around the target, hitting all enemies in range. You can do this attack from 25 yoms away. Its power is 600 potency to the first target and 300 to any additional enemies. In a lot of situations, you will only get to use this once per battle. Between packs of trash mobs in dungeons and before bosses, you can use Soul Soul to prepare for when the tank has grouped all the enemies together. Ideally, because you only have one use, you'll also use it when under Arcane Circle or other buffs. You absolutely do not want to be using Soul Soul mid-fight unless, as I said before, the boss cannot be targeted. Using Harp once, then running back in will be worth more on average. If just because, Soul Gauge is worth so much more than not having Soul Gauge. And if there's no enemies to hit, all you can do is just sit and wait, spend the time charging your Soul So. And be sure to use Harvest Moon before any point in a fight where the boss would leave. If you never use it, you can't get an additional charge. It's a skill that very much gets better with working around specific fight design. Under buffs to replace a weaker skill, used when the boss summons a bunch of added enemies so you can use it for AoE, or use it when you absolutely cannot stay near the boss. This is better than Harp, which also if you need to ingress or regress away from the boss, use Harvest Moon instead of that instant cast Harp. And let me really just emphasize how strong this is in AoE. There are only two attacks stronger than Harvest Moon for AoE. Gluttony, especially on a high number of targets, and your level 90 skill Communio. Those are the only two skills that, by themselves, are stronger than Harvest Moon in AoE. Level 84, Enhanced Arcane Crest. This trait is extremely good, despite what it might seem. This is why I told you to practice using Arcane Crest. Anytime your shield breaks, it explodes into Crest of Time Returned. All allies, and yourself, are given 15 seconds of 100 potency regen as long as they are within 15 yoms. And because of how damage and healing over time effects work, this amounts to 500 potency of healing. In any dungeon fight with low amounts of party-wide damage, this can single-handedly heal. Higher damaging fights, this helps top everyone off sooner and easier. Anytime you are going to take unavoidable damage, raid-wide, targeted, or stack marker, use this skill. You help everyone, not just yourself. It is very good. Level 86, Enhanced Shroud. Enhanced Shroud is a trait that slightly changes how the Shroud Gauge works. Using any of your skills will spend a charge of Lemire Shroud and replace it with a charge of Void Shroud, from red dots to purple. However, upon using your fifth Lemire Shroud, you will automatically exit the Avatar form, even if you have Void Shroud charges. You spend these Void Shrouds on... Level 86, Lemire Slice, and Lemire's Scythe. Both of these cost two Void Shroud charges. So after two attacks, so after two attacks, you get one Lemire's attack. These are off globals, so you can weave them between your Lemire Shroud skills. Let's take the AoE Lemire Scythe, for example. This does 100 potency to all enemies in an 8 yom cone, costing two Void Shroud. So you would do Grim Reaping, Grim Reaping, Lemire Scythe, Grim Reaping, Grim Reaping, Lemire Scythe, Grim Reaping. Then there's the single target version, Lemire Slice. This works the same way, but does 200 potency to a single enemy. Use two Reapings, Lemire Slice, two Reapings, Lemire Slice, and your final Reaping. This further increases how active this phase is by two skills, but they're a good amount of power to ensure you're getting them in. Also note, if you're having trouble finding these skills, it's because you've had them on your bar since level 70. 
Bloodstalk and Grim Swath become these two skills when you are enshrouded. Level 88, Enhanced Arcane Circle. Arcane Circle is given an extra buff of sorts. All allies, including yourself, affected by Arcane Circle have 5 seconds to successfully use a weapon skill or spell. Upon doing so, it will grant you one stack of Immortal Sacrifice, one per player, up to a maximum of eight. So hope your allies are all using skills like they should be. When the five seconds are up and all stacks have been calculated, you may spend them on the skill gained at this level. Level 88, Plentiful Harvest. Once the other sacrifice buffs wear off after about seven seconds, you can use this skill. It does a minimum of 520 potency up to a maximum of 800 potency based on the number of stacks of Immortal Sacrifice you have. Essentially, each party member's stack increases the power of Plentiful Harvest by 40 potency. But this is also an AoE in a straight line that goes 15 yoms in the direction of your target, and it's a fairly wide line. The second enemy and further will take 60% less damage, so 208 potency to 320 potency per enemy, depending on the stack count. This is a very big hit you want to get out before Arcane Circle runs out. But the rewards don't end there. Every use of Plentiful Harvest gives 50 Shroud Gauge no matter what. So you can put your buff on enemies, use Arcane Circle, attack until the stacks come in, then Plentiful Harvest to go right into your avatar form. Further, you'll still be under Arcane Circle meaning your avatar form is further power boosted, where before, you'd never have enough Shroud Gauge until at least the second Arcane Circle. So now, on top of trying to get Arcane Circle on every ally to buff their damage, you want to do so to buff yourself. Be sure to get it running when a fight begins, and every time it comes off of cooldown. And let me also say, anytime Arcane Circle is about to come off cooldown, make sure you use any Shroud Gauge you have. If you have, say, 70 Shroud Gauge and use Plentiful Harvest, you just lost 20 Gauge. So now you have some level of actual Gauge management to deal with. Level 90, Communio. Only usable when enshrouded, and automatically ends your enshrouded phase. This does a massive 1000 potency to the target enemy, and 400 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the initial target. It also comes with a 1.3 second cast time, which means you can't be on the move for it. This is now the ultimate reason why you want to use Enshroud. Sure, the quick slice and dice is really strong, but this finisher is huge for both AoE and boss fights. It's a bit of a pace breaker compared to the general speed of everything else in your Enshrouded phase, but otherwise it isn't too hard to get used to. To put it simply to find when to use Communio, after your second use of Lemire Slice or Lemire Scythe is always Communio, four Enshrouded attacks, two Lemure attacks, and a Communio per phase of Enshroud. And Communio must be the last action you take if you want to get the full worth of your Enshrouded phase. That must be emphasized. But if, say, you accidentally enter Shroud phase before the boss becomes untargetable or will die soon, you can end your Shroud early with Communio. Getting that out can take precedence to losing the entire phase due to downtime, but don't just waste it. Now it's time to slot it all in into our previous opener. Same as before, we want to get into our opener quick and get out everything big. Everyone will be getting in and getting out early. So we start up quick. But now we have a lot more to do in our opener. Pre-pull. Soul Sow to get Harvest Moon. Shadow of Death. Arcane Circle. Soul Slice. Gluttony. Gibbet. Gallows. Plentiful Harvest. And Shroud, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemire Slice, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemire Slice, Communio, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Shadow of Death. 
here is where everything falls into place. We keep our opening moves the same, but now once we finish Gluttony's two Soul Reaver attacks, Plentiful Harvest will be available for use. So while everyone has their big buffs running, we immediately go into Enshroud. Ideally, this is how Enshroud always works, so we move through it normally, finishing with Communio. With Communio out, we use our second Soul Slice, spend the gauge for a Gibbet or Gallows, and by this point our Arcane Circle will have run out, so we extend our desk design for the rotation going forward. We could also potentially fit in Harvest Moon here before we desk design, but only if our allies still have their buffs running on us, or if we won't need it later for disengaging from the enemy. Remember, it is better than Harp. And now let's do the karaoke opener, emphasizing the speed of this one final time. Shadow of Death, Arcane Circle, Soul Slice, Gluttony, Gibbet, Gallows, Plentiful Harvest, and Shroud, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Let Me a Slice, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Let Me a Slice, Communio, Soul Slice, Bloodstock, Gibbet, Shadow of Death. Once again, from here the rotation becomes pretty simple. Spend gauge where you can, gluttony on cooldown, and be sure to repeat the opener every two minutes. You can repeat this every time Arcane Circle comes back up, and should. Get used to how speedy in Shroud Phase is, and Reaper will reward you with big damage and occasionally speedy fighting. Though, you'll be avoiding skill speed on your gear otherwise. Consider that a side effect of the Avatar. Thank you for watching this Reaper 1-90 to leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those things really do help creators. Maybe even head over to my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies.